the show that magicians around the globe don't want you to see. The Masked Magician is back, out of hiding, daring to expose the world's most highly guarded secrets. You'll find out how they perform amazing appearances, death-defying escapes, baffling levitations, astounding vanishes, mind-blowing sleight of hand, and impossible illusions. No magician is too famous. No trick too big. No secret too sacred. The Magician's Code will be forever broken on Magic's Biggest Secrets Finally Revealed. magician pulls back the curtain and exposes the secrets to enduring an encounter with a racer sharp guillotine Houdini's death defying milk can escape causing a beautiful woman to appear and disappear at will surviving strangulation by a steel chain Commanding a stage full of sexy dancers to vanish in the blink of an eye. Plus, the truth behind how a man can levitate three stories above the ground. And much more. Right now on Magic's Biggest Secrets, finally revealed. The magician is about to stare death in the face in the form of this imposing guillotine. Once used to behead dangerous killers, lawbreakers, and the wives of kings, the guillotine gained its gruesome infamy during the French Revolution. But that's enough of a history lesson. Tonight, the magician hopes to survive before he's history. He examines the execution device with its razor-sharp blade, which is designed to cleanly sever the head from an unfortunate body. To ensure a clean cut, the neck of the victim is held in place by this heavy wooden stock. Anyone who would get into a device like this voluntarily has to have confidence in his powers of escape or a death wish. Let's hope the girls know how to do the rest of his tricks. If this is going to be his swan song, what a way to go. The magician climbs up onto the table and bends down as the assistants raise the stock. He places his head through the hole so that his neck can be trapped between the wooden planks. Meanwhile, another assistant is securing his legs to the table with thick leather straps. The straps will hold the magician in place in case he has a last minute change of heart. It will also prevent his body from flying off the table in the event the blade hits its target. Of course, all of these restraints will make his escape near impossible and that much more dangerous. Remember, the magician is a world-class professional. Don't try any of his dangerous illusions at home. With the wooden stocks in place and the leather straps cinched tightly around his body, it's time for the magician to begin his escape. That deadly blade is looming just a few feet from his neck. So why isn't he struggling to escape? Maybe he has a death wish after all. Let's watch. It's now or never. Oh no, he didn't get out. That wasn't supposed to happen. This is getting more grisly by the second. As the assistants cover his lifeless body with a sheet, one of the girls places his lifeless head on the table. Maybe it's not so lifeless after all. And now here are the secrets. The blade is real, and therefore makes this trick very dangerous to perform. The timing is crucial and means the difference between life and death. The straps are real too, and the magician never leaves the table. What about the head? Well, that's the magician's real head we see falling into the basket. But how does he keep from losing his head while performing this trick? Let's start with the blade. 
When it drops, it stops against these steel blocks. The sharp edge never touches the magician. But if that's really his head falling into the basket, how does he create the illusion? The magician's neck and upper body drop down through this rubber collar that is painted to look like wood. It snaps closed again once his neck has passed through. Watch again in slow motion as his neck passes through the rubber collar and then snaps closed. And that's not really the blade inside the hole. From behind, we see this small board that is held up by the magician's neck. When he drops down, the board falls down too, creating the illusion that the blade is visible from behind the hole. From the front, it appears as though the blade has separated his head from his body. The table is rigged with a secret trap door that springs open with the action of the blade. Behind the blade is a metal rod. This rod continues to fall after the blade stops, triggering a switch on the table that releases the trap door. When this trap is released, the magician's torso falls down into the basket. But it appears as though his body is still lying on the bench. That's because hidden inside his jacket is a rigid body cast that simulates his back and shoulders. This shell creates the illusion of his body on the bench. Here's what it looks like without the jacket in place. But with the jacket on, it appears that his body never moves. But if his head isn't severed, what does the assistant take out of the basket? You guessed it. It's a fake head hidden by a mask identical to the magician's. Before the trick begins, the fake head and a red scarf are concealed in the basket out of the audience's view. After the magician drops down into the basket, the assistant simply reaches down around him and picks up the fake head and scarf and shows them to the audience. But how does this fake head magically come back to life? Of course, it doesn't. What you don't know is that the magician has an exact double. Well, almost exact. At least the mask is the same. Not only does the table have a trap door for the magician, it also has another secret. Beneath the table is a concealed hiding place for the double. She climbs in and waits patiently for her cue. She's hidden from the audience by this mirror which reflects the floor beneath the table. Above, the table is equipped with flexible slats and the otherwise solid top. The rubber slats allow the double to pop her head up through the table. One assistant carries the fake head and scarf to the back of the table, while another girl is arranging an identical scarf around the rubber slats. While blocked from view, the assistant appears to place the head on the bench. Actually, she's walking away with it. With the slats disguised by the red scarf, all that's left for the double to do is open her eyes and give the audience the shock of their lives. And that's the secret to not losing your head. And now the magician has a little bit of sleight of hand using nothing more than a glass top table and this shiny penny. Take a good look at the penny. In fact, never take your eyes off of it. He taps the glass from underneath to prove that it's solid. We could already see that. Next, he taps the top and leaves the penny on the center of the table. With one palm directly below the glass, the magician covers the penny with his other hand. Now watch for the magic. His top hand is removed and we can see that the penny has melted through the glass and is now on his palm. It's not an illusion. It's definitely on the other side of the glass. A cheap trick with a penny that completely baffles the mind. How does the magician make the penny melt through the glass and wind up underneath on his open palm? You know there has to be a simple explanation. Here are the secrets. First, there are two pennies, and they're not even real. They're made of steel. Before the trick begins, the magician palms one of the fake coins in his left hand. He places the other coin on the solid glass table. The next secret involves the ring on his right hand. This ring holds a super strong magnet that is concealed beneath his fingers. That's why the fake pennies are made of steel. They're attracted to the magnet. When he holds the secretly palmed steel coin beneath the glass, he covers it with a magnet, which is powerful enough to attract the steel through the glass. 
Now that the palmed coin is hidden from view, all he has to do is slide it forward so that it's directly above his open palm. When he lifts his top hand away, the coin that's below the glass drops into his palm. At the same time, the steel coin on top of the table is attracted to the magnet. Take a penny, leave a penny. And that's how he makes it look like the coin passes through the solid glass. Up next, the magician defies death and exposes Houdini's world-famous milk can escape. The shocking truth behind levitating three stories above the ground. Plus making gorgeous women appear and vanish without a trace. Next, the magician has an illusion that's been baffling audiences for decades. Let's see if it will fool cultured contemporary eyes. Sitting atop four legs is a fancy cabinet with a curtain across the front. When the curtain is opened, we can see that it appears empty. As we take a look around to the other side, we see that the back is also covered by a curtain. With both of them pulled open, we can see straight through the cabinet. Aside from the magician, there's nothing inside. Knowing how magic works, we can assume that this is only a temporary condition. Right on cue, two of his lovely assistants enter to lend a hand and, as always, some eye candy. This guy sure knows how to pick them. Back to the trick. The curtains are drawn and the magician cues the assistants to take the box for a little spin on the floor. This is usually when the magic happens. The front curtain is opened up, and yep, I was right. A bouquet of flowers. Not the most elaborate bouquet. Then again, the delivery was pretty fast. But the magician isn't satisfied with them, so he puts them back in the box. The curtain is drawn, and he gives the signal for the girls to rotate the box again. They're getting a workout tonight. It's time to open the curtain again to see what's up next. And look at this. Another beautiful girl. Maybe that's where he gets them. And she seems delighted by that pathetic bouquet. Just imagine what she would do if he gave her some roses. The curtain is drawn once again, depriving us of the view of the girl inside. The assistants go back into the routine while the magician makes his patented hand gestures. Let's see what's going to happen this time. A magical wave and there's the bouquet. Not exactly a great trick. Maybe she didn't like them after all. Let's take a look behind the curtain. The girl has vanished without a trace. Perhaps he should have sprung for the roses, or maybe even a ring. Well, he still has the other two, and that seems like more than enough for him to handle. OK, let's recap. We saw that there was nothing in the cabinet at the start of the trick. After the required spin by the assistants, the flowers appeared. Another spin, then the beautiful girl appeared. After the final spin, when the curtains were opened, she was nowhere to be found. So how did the magician create this complex illusion? The secret is in the cabinet. There are some hidden panels that conceal the girl and her flowers. Before the trick begins, the girl folds up the side panel plus the panel in the floor and climbs in. She covers her legs with the floor panel and flips down the side panel so she can't be seen. As we can see, the curtain hides the fact that the right side of the box is much wider than it appears, giving the girl room to hide. When the curtain is closed the first time, the girl flips open the side panel and deposits the flowers. With the curtain opened, you can see how it works. The magician opens the curtain and finds that the flowers have appeared, as if by magic. When the assistants are spinning the box the second time, the girl inside the cabinet is opening both panels and climbing into place while the team outside is drawing our attention. 
this is where a small, flexible assistant comes in handy. She's only got a few seconds to get settled before her appearance. Let's watch with the curtain opened. She's got to be very agile and very fast. She also can't be claustrophobic. As we can see, there's barely enough space for the panel to flip down and clear her lovely legs. She gets into a seductive pose just in time for the magician to open the curtain. There she is. During the final turn, she reverses the process and climbs back into her secret compartment. From here, she's able to reach down and hand the flowers to the magician, creating the illusion that she's still in the cabinet. With the back curtain open, we can see how she flips up the side panel and reaches out with the flowers in her hand. Once he takes them from her, she flips the panel back down and is completely hidden from view. The curtain is open, and it appears that she has completely vanished. And that's how the magician makes a girl appear and disappear, while making her do all the work. Here's a simple trick that's very effective. The magician begins by showing us a length of ordinary string. And a plastic drinking straw. He feeds the string into the straw. and then demonstrates that it really goes in one side and comes out the other. He bends the straw in the center and tells us to watch closely, as if we had anything better to do. He picks up a sharp hobby knife and very carefully he cuts through the straw and the string. He separates the two halves of the straw to prove that the slice has gone all the way through. Uh-oh, here comes the magical waves. Something's gonna happen. He lays one straw on top of the other and pulls the string. Miraculously, it comes out in one long piece, just like it started. The straws go bye-bye and tug-tug the string is good as new. Fooled us again, masked man, but how? What are the secrets to pulling off the brain twister of cutting through the straws and string and revealing the string as good as new? You're about to find out. The straw is real, so is the knife. Before the trick begins, the magician secretly uses the knife to carefully slice a long slit lengthwise in the straw. See, he can open the straw and show you inside, but he never lets the audience see this. The slit is the first secret. The magician feeds the string into the straw. Yes, it's really going inside. He bends the straw in half and when he tugs on both ends of the string at the same time, it pops out through the slit and will be concealed by his fingers. There's the string and here's how he covers it up. Now he takes the knife, cuts through the straw and presumably the string. In reality, the string is safe and sound below the blade. See, it is still fed through the two remaining ends of the straw. With his finger covering the string, it looks like two separate pieces hanging from inside the straw. The magician then stacks the straws, being careful not to let the middle of the string show, as it does here. He pulls the end of the string, and it easily slides out in one long piece. He discards the pieces of straw so they can't be examined and turns all eyes to the undamaged string. It's in one piece, thanks to the secrets. Up next, after a century of silence, one of Houdini's most famous escapes will be exposed at last. Plus the secrets behind a beloved classic trick.
Then find out how to make a line of sexy chorus girls disappear. And we solve the incredible mystery as to how street magicians perform amazing outdoor levitation. The masked magician will now attempt to perform one of Harry Houdini's most famous escapes. The one that was once promoted with the slogan, failure means a drowning death. The magician displays a large milk can that's been filled with water. This particular can has a bulletproof plate glass window, an aftermarket addition, so that we can see what the magician is up to once he's inside. His beautiful assistants remove the lid, and I think you can guess what's going to happen next. The magician steals his courage and squeezes into the can of water. In Houdini's day, shipping milk in these large metal barrels was commonplace. So milk cans weren't out of the ordinary. However, attempting to escape from one filled with water was quite an unthinkable act. It's a tight fit, but he manages to fit his arms inside and force himself down. The water cascades to the floor. It's real, all right, and wet. Step back, ladies. The magician will take a few deep breaths before he can plunge all the way into the can. That mask isn't helping matters either. He'll test his ability by trying to hold his breath in this very intimidating can. Try to hold your breath with him. His assistants place the metal lid in place. There he is, behind the glass. Remember what I said about drowning? It's important to remember that this is a world-class magician, and at no time should you attempt any of his dangerous tricks at home. The magician is doing a test run of his lung power, only to see how long he can last once he's really locked inside. How about you? Are you still holding your own? He seems to be doing okay, but remember, his hands will be shackled just like Houdini's were 100 years ago. It's nearly a minute now. That's about all he can take. His assistants remove the lid, and it seems like he's happy to be breathing again. Did you last as long as he did? He's shaken, but ready to go on. The extra hardware will make the escape even more death-defying. The magician willingly holds out his wrists for a pair of regulation police handcuffs. Wonder where she got those. Since Houdini was known as the handcuff king, this is only fitting. A few more deep breaths, and the magician is again ready to squirm his way back into the can. The lid is returned to its position. And this time, the assistants secure it with heavy-duty padlocks. They'd better hurry. Even experienced divers would find it terrifying to hold their breath while handcuffed and locked inside a cold steel can. Try holding your breath again and imagine that you've got no way out. Not so easy, is it? There we see him struggling with the handcuffs. Even if he smuggled a lock pick into the can, reaching the locks on the outside would be impossible. Houdini was right. Failure could mean a drowning death. He wrestles with the cuffs for a few more seconds. Maybe he needs some privacy. His assistants raise a curtain in front of the can. By now, he's been locked underwater for more than a minute and hasn't made any progress. 
This is longer than he lasted the first time before he had to be let out. He must be starting to panic. Are you still holding your breath? It's been 90 seconds now and still no sign of him. The assistants better do something. Get him out of there. He's safe. What a relief. I bet even Houdini didn't have a welcoming committee like this. So how did the magician escape before drowning in the old-time milk can? Here are the secrets. First off, the handcuffs look solid, but they've been specially rigged to pop open in an instant. Cuffs like these are almost always used in underwater escapes to minimize the risk of danger. When the magician first plunges into the can, he displaces a lot of water, leaving more room for air to breathe. It's a good acting job, but in reality, he has plenty of space to move freely. The first time we see him behind the glass, we're convinced that he has to hold his breath while inside the can. But check out the lid. The dome-shaped top allows him some extra room to reach up and take a breath whenever he needs to. While we're distracted by his hands behind the porthole, his head is safely above the waterline beneath this dome. Opening the lid to put on the handcuffs only adds more drama to the escape. The lid is locked into place with real padlocks that never get open. They don't have to, because the neck of the can is surrounded by a false collar held on by these rivets. The assistants remove the rivets when they attach the locks. Here we see how easily the lid and the collar are removed. Next, the sheet is raised. The magician can see the sheet through the glass and knows that it's time to make his escape. He simply pushes up on the lid and it effortlessly pops off, locks and all. All he has to do now is climb out of the can. Once the magician is outside, he replaces the lid and stands next to the can, waiting to make his miraculous appearance. The girls provide the hero's welcome, and the illusion is complete. Up next, find out how the magician makes a line of dancing girls vanish in an instant, and survives a solid steel chain being pulled through his neck. Plus, a classic of magic will be exposed. And then, the surprising truth behind an impossible levitation. The magician will now demonstrate another of magic's most famous tricks. He picks up a small metal pan that's solid on the bottom and all the way around. With a lighter, he sets a small fire inside the pan, quickly covering it with a metal lid. Presto, some flowers for his lovely ladies. But how did he do it? So how does the magician pull off the trick that's been amazing kids at birthday parties for years? Tonight, he reveals the secrets. First, as he's showing us the back of the empty pan, he's concealing a sheet of chemically treated flash paper inside. This is what he ignites with the lighter to cause the fire. When he uses the lid to smother the blaze, he's actually dropping a second pan inside. This pan is slightly smaller and fits snugly in the original pan. Until it's needed, the second pan is secretly held in the lid by these metal spring clamps. The pan snaps into the lid and is held tightly by the springs until they come in contact with the outer pan. This releases the springs and the secret inner pan drops into place. Now for the flowers. They're made of folded pieces of tissue paper and also contain strips of spring steel. When released, they pop open. Before the trick begins, a magician carefully folds the flowers into the secret pan and loads it into the lid. During the trick, he smothers the fire, releases the secret pan, 
and reveals the paper flowers. Sometimes a dove or a small rabbit is inside, but either way, the secret is the same. The magician will now demonstrate an illusion that's designed to feature his four leggy assistants and their features. The girls step back up onto the stage as evidenced by their red patent leather boots. Take one last look. The magician commands the curtain to be lowered and raised. In a split second, all four women have vanished. A big finish to the routine, but not exactly what I had in mind. Pretty impressive, masked man. Now be a sport and show us what you did with the girls. So how did the magician make his four lovely dancing girls vanish in an instant? The secrets are something to see. First off, it involves the girls in their very stylish red leather boots. An identical set of four pairs of boots is concealed backstage. The back wall of the stage is built in two sections. When the curtain is lowered, a stagehand behind the wall released a mechanism that allows the top half to swing open. When the girls head back and appear to be walking up and across the stage, they're actually walking the duplicate boots in front of the wall while they stay behind. Sweet. From the front, it looks like the girls are simply strutting into place behind the curtain. Without the curtain in place, we can see how clearly the girls manipulate the fake legs. These are the boots we see just below the bottom of the curtain. So we know that the girls are behind the wall and the fake legs are in front, but how does he make them vanish? There's another secret to these tricky boots. They have hooks built right in. See, I wouldn't lie. A pipe is lowered from the ceiling. Just as the top of the wall flips open, the girls have just enough room to hook the boots onto the pipe. By the time the curtain is being lowered, the boots are already hooked over the pipe. Just a split second before the curtain rises, the trick wall is closed and the pipe is raised taking the boots along for the ride. Without the curtain in place, this is what the audience would see. Not very magical. All that's left for the magician to do is take the credit for a job well done by his assistants. Up next, find out how the magician escapes the chains of death and the amazing secret to an impossible levitation. Something tells me this next trick is going to involve this sturdy length of chain. And lucky for us, the magician's lovely assistants. The magician tugs on the chain to prove that it's solid. He then drapes the chain over his head so that it rests behind his neck. Next, he wraps the chain one more time around his neck and pulls the two ends to the front. These ends, he ties in a knot and hands to the two ladies. Trusting guy. One more look at the knot, and the magician steadies his nerves. The girls are ready. On his command, they pull the chain, and it magically passes right through his neck. He's unharmed. The chain? and his neck are still in one piece. Now, here's the secret. The chain is real, and it's made of solid steel. It hasn't been prepared in any way. The key to this illusion is the manner in which the magician places the chain around his neck. By using some sleight of hand, the magician pretends to wrap the chain completely around his neck. It's pretty convincing. From this angle, you can see that the chain is merely wrapped to the back and looped, giving the impression that it completely circles his neck. From the front, it appears as though he's completing the circle with a dangerous knot. Instead, 
he's actually doubled back the chain so that it will easily slip to the front when the assistants pull on it. Here we can see that the loop is tucked behind his jacket to keep it hidden from view. When the assistants tug the chain, they're simply releasing the loop and pulling the chain to the front. Look closely and you can see the chain slipping around his neck, not through it, just like unraveling a sweater. This rear angle shows the direction of the chain as the loop is pulled out. The magician and the assistants have to take care while performing this trick since there is a real danger of the chain links getting tangled. If they do, this harmless illusion can quickly become a harmful strangulation. They've practiced many times, so don't try this one at home. Popular extreme magicians have been making themselves float through the air as proof of their unusual freakish powers. Tonight, the masked magician joins them. He's made his way to the top of his secret warehouse and intends to demonstrate the extent of his unique abilities in broad daylight. As you can see, he's completely alone on the roof, and there are no visible wires or hydraulic lifts around to aid him in his attempt to levitate. Watch carefully, and let's see if he's as good as the street magicians who claim they can do this for real. Wow, he's floating off the roof. Well, it certainly looks like he's floating, but that could be an illusion. Let's watch some more. He's now hovering over the building without any visible means of support. This actually does look pretty freaky. He's floating in midair. It's effortless. Maybe he's just thinking happy, wonderful thoughts like Peter Pan. He couldn't possibly be thinking about the three-story fall to the concrete below. As we can see from the back, he's not wearing any kind of James Bond jetpack. These incredible angles show a complete view of the magician and the area around him. He's achieving the impossible. Watch now as he begins to float down toward the earth with nothing above and nothing below to help him accomplish this trick through devious means. And there he is, safe on the ground. The masked magician will expose the amazing truth behind his incredible levitation. We just saw the masked magician climb to the roof of his secret warehouse, rise up and float effortlessly through the air without any visible means of support. These incredible angles show a complete view of the magician and the area around him. This feat is truly a miracle. Or is it? So how does the magician rise up off the roof and float through the sky like a superhero? The secret may come as a bit of a surprise, so I'll let you down easy. He doesn't have superpowers. He's not even in control of his own flight path. The man in charge is right here, sitting in the cab of a 50-foot crane. Dangling from the top of this crane is a set of very thin aircraft cables, the same kind used to make Peter Pan fly on Broadway and in theaters across the country and around the world. Concealed beneath the magician's jacket is a specially designed harness that has been used on stage for decades. Before the trick begins, the crane operator lowers the cables down to the stagehands who attach them securely to the harness. Once they're double and triple checked, the magician is ready to fly with the greatest of ease. But why don't we see the cable suspending him in the air? The secret is the bright sky. Remember I said he wanted to show you his power in broad daylight and that there were no visible wires? That's because the glare from the bright sun and sky makes the wires impossible for the cameras and even the human eye to detect. From the proper angle, the brightness of the sky blocks the cables, making them invisible. From this angle, you can see that the camera can pick up the wires, shattering the illusion. 
While demonstrating his supposedly magical abilities, we saw the magician alter his flight pattern with nothing above or near him. The secret here involves moving the crane. In between shots of the magician in the air, the crane was repositioned to allow the operator the freedom to fly the magician in different directions. Clever editing of the various angles makes it look like he's flying around the parking lot. The most difficult part of this trick is lowering the magician to a soft landing. How about that? It is done with wires after all. Next time, the masked magician returns to reveal more of magic's biggest secrets. Next tonight, back with a brand new series, it's Cops with Cameras. Dexter's back in the new series too, and he'll be on the hunt for his next victim in the US drama at 10. And later at 11, there's explosive martial arts combat in Cage Gladiators.